Hey, what's up? Justin here and welcome back to 65 Drums. Both of these hi-hats have had a similar problem. The bow zone slowly became less and less sensitive. The good news is fixing an electronic drum pad is not like brain surgery or anything. There's only a couple of different kinds of sensors the entire industry uses. 99% of electronic drums just run off of piezos, which are like a buck a piece, and switches. And then there are some rare edge cases where companies will use FSR or some sort of third party thing that they created themselves like smart fabric. Those are kind of like edge cases, but most of the time companies just use piezos and switches. Now in the case of this VH11 hi-hat, what had gone wrong was that the piezo had become, you know, loose. It became unglued from the top of the symbol and it was just kind of dangling there. The wire was still affixed to the symbol, but the piezo was just losing contact. And that's why it lost sensitivity. All I had to do was literally just glue it back into place and that was it. With the field hi-hats, it was a little bit more complicated but it was still a very simple fix. Okay, so here are the individual components of this older generation of field hi-hats. You have the top piece, which is a regular acoustic symbol. Here's what it sounds like, by the way. It really doesn't sound half bad, but then they have to add a lot of dampening material to it. Whenever you have an acoustic cymbal, it shakes around a lot. It bends, it warps every single time you hit it, meaning that your drum module will be confused. So you need to dampen that cymbal down so when you hit it, less vibrations go through it, making the overall trigger accuracy better. That's why you'll see the Jobeki low volume triggered cymbals. They usually have like a little band of rubber or fabric going around the edge just to dampen some of those vibrations. So the dampening material on this cymbal is a large sheet of very thick rubber, and it does the job pretty well. Underneath the rubber piece is another sheet of metal, and so you've got basically a cymbal sandwich. You'll see this little box poking out underneath the top cymbal. That's for the trigger inputs where you plug in your stereo cable, and that is connected to these two piezos on top of that metal sheet. One piezo is for sensing the edge, and the other piezo is for sensing the bow area. This is kind of unusual because I was expecting a switch going around the edge of the cymbal, and then just one piezo for the bow area. So this is a little bit different, than like a VH11, VH10, VH12, or VH13 from Roland. And because the sensors are different from a Roland symbol, you might need to change some of the settings when you plug this into like a TD50 or a TD11. Okay, so what had gone wrong with this symbol? It was actually a very simple fix. All I had to do was reconnect one of the wires to the input jack. Somehow it had pulled away, and all I had to do was re-solder it back into place. I had to strip away some of the plastic housing of the cable. This is a very, very tiny cable, and it took me a couple of tries to get it right because I am not the DIY uh, e-drum fixing master. But all I had to do was solder it back into place and then put the cymbal back together. It took me way longer than it should have, but now I could probably do it in hardly any time at all. Now let's move ahead to the review. I'm gonna keep this a little bit shorter than usual because these are not the current version you can buy from field.com. Uh, these are only available on like eBay or something because they're the older version so you can only find them in used condition. But the person I'm borrowing them from, he bought them in used condition and there's probably people watching that are seeing an eBay listing or you know run across these on Facebook Marketplace so I thought this might still be useful. A lot of the good and bad about it just stems from the fact that they're made out of metal. They look amazing and they feel amazing but the triggering isn't quite as good as some of the other rubber symbol competition. We'll get to that in a second. First of all, I like the raw symbol design. I'm a sucker for this kind of look. I don't remember what this was called, but I think there was several finish options. There was like this raw version, and there's probably like a brilliant series version. You didn't have to buy it just looking like this. You could have chosen which look you went with, but I really like this version of the hi-hat. Now, of course, the look of these symbols is intentional. When you turn the symbols around, unfortunately, they didn't do much of a weathering process on this, so it doesn't quite match the top of the symbol. But yeah, they look freaking awesome, and you wouldn't be able to tell they were electronic from a distance. Of course, the other core strength is that because they're made out of metal, they feel nicer than rubber symbols. Here's something I didn't really think about before I got these metal symbols. Rubber symbols, when you hit the edge, they, they give. They crumple underneath your drumstick, and then they pop back into place. So that sort of changes the way they feel entirely. And of course, when you hit the top of the cymbal, the rebound will be different because you're hitting a piece of rubber. When you're hitting a piece of metal, the rebound is different. The edge doesn't crush at all when you're hitting it, unless you like dent it or something. And so that completely changes the feel. These are also heavier. So playing this feels much more realistic. Now, the only downsides as far as the way it looks 
is that they have the visible screws here, which they fixed in the new version. There's no visible screws. On the plus side though, having screws like that made it easy to take it apart and do the fix. Another really useful thing that they did was build a wire into the bottom symbol. So now all you have to do is plug in cables to these little boxes on the bottom of the cymbal. Now because of this channel, I'm constantly setting up drums and then tearing them down and then getting different drums and setting those up and tearing them down. I notice whenever a company does something like this, that saves you a couple of seconds. And it kind of adds up. If you're playing live with these, this will save you a couple of seconds every time you set up and every time you tear stuff down. Okay, so let's talk about the bottom controller piece. They're using a piston design with a twist. So obviously when you push down on your hi-hat pedal, it pushes the piston down and then that tells the module how closed your hi-hat is. You literally have to twist it into place on the bottom cymbal. They're locked together like that. So when I first got these, I thought that I had to screw them all the way together and they would only open this far. And I was like, man, that's kind of dumb. Why would Feel do it like that? But literally you choose how open or closed you want to set it. You can decide how open or closed it is by just loosening this from the top piece or tightening it down. One last thing I wanna mention about the hardware before we talk about triggering performance is that it's using this little knob, this little dial to help you affix this to the hi-hat rod. I thought this was really cool and elegant when I first got it. But the problem is it's hard to really tighten it down because you don't have the torque of having a, a wider, a wider like little knob like this. So it's harder to get this sticking to your hi-hat rod without slowly sliding down your hi-hat stand. And it also part of the problem is that these are just really heavy. You have the top symbol, you have a piece of rubber, then you have the bottom metal piece. These are heavier than the average acoustic symbols or electronic symbols. So I kind of wish this came with one of these, like a classic drum piece of hardware versus this little knob. Okay, so these hi-hats look amazing. They feel amazing to play on. But as far as overall triggering goes, I would say that it's good, but not excellent. I feel like the triggering of like a VH10 or a VH13 is a little bit better than these. I feel like it's a little bit finicky when you're adjusting the open and closed, and that's really where it struggles a tiny bit. Once you get it in place and once you got it working, everything is fine. I've used this mostly with a TD50, and remember, the TD50 has presets for the Roland cymbals, which use a switch and then a piezo. So you might have to mess a little bit with the rim gain and re-trigger cancel a little bit to make it so that it's working better. Because again, this is two piezos versus the regular presets that are a switch and a piezo. The overall symbol package, I think is good, especially if you find it for a decent price on eBay. I don't think this is quite as good as like a VH13, but no hi-hat really is right now. Really enjoyed using them. You guys have responded pretty positively. Anytime I've uploaded an Instagram video or had these in a regular YouTube video, they feel great, they look great, and they respond well, but not perfectly. So that is my quick little review. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. See you in a few.